Hi, my name is Samir Khan and I'm an application engineer at MapleSoft. My role is to speak to our customers and help them use and understand our tools, technology and services. In this presentation we'll learn about some interesting new hydraulics modelling technology that we've developed for our systems engineering tool MapleSim. We worked very closely in partnership with a company called Modelon to develop this technology. We'll start by learning why MapleSoft decided to introduce this exciting new functionality. We'll then discover its key features and I'll demonstrate its use in MapleSim. As a company, our goal is to provide engineers and other technical professionals with the tools they need to solve engineering problems. These challenges can be as simple as producing a design or calculation sheet, or it could be something as complex as a systems model of a vehicle from the ground up. Typically, MapleSim's users work in a number of key industries. We have engineers working in automotive, mining, construction equipment, offshore, marine and more. And the, these users tend to build models in our tools for virtual prototyping and exploring the solution space, systems integration and controls design. And we're finding that our customers are increasingly building models with significant fluid power elements. These include models of things like forklift tr trucks, scissor lift systems, excavators, hydraulic presses, braking systems. And typically, the subsystems in these models may be transmissions, stereo mechanisms, hydrostatic drives, or some kind of actuation mechanism. So, MapleSoft have two primary tools that these technical professionals use. Our base tool, our brand ambassador, is Maple. It's a tool for math and modelling. It is a powerful symbolic and numeric math engine with advanced visualisation tools. It also offers technologies like automatically parallelised math and advanced tools for global optimization. We also have free runtime distribution of Maple applications through the Maple player. MapleSim is our tool for multi-domain physical modelling. MapleSim runs on top of Maple. That means that MapleSim can exploit the symbolic and numeric math technology that we've refined over the course of 25-30 years of continued development. Moreover, we've added tools for controls design, time modelling and transmission modelling. We also have connectivity into real-time tool chains like DSpace, LabVIEW and Simulink. By and large, in the remainder of the presentation, we'll concentrate on the upper layer, the upper segment, that's MapleSim, although we will occasionally dip into Maple. So let's backtrack and let's look at some of the common themes that the models that our customers develop have. So, these models tend to be multi-domain. They have components that include multi-body elements, tyres, electromechanical elements, hydraulic systems and more. Portions of these models are often deployed to real-time systems and we find a critical factor in this is the speed of the real-time code that we generate. And increasingly, these models have significant hydraulic subsystems. That could be a hydrostatic drive or some kind of actuation mechanism. MapleSim actually ships with a basics hydraulic library. It has a small number of hydrolyzed components and it's perfect for systems where hydraulics are a small focus of the modelling and where you need to model flow rates and pressure drops at a coarse level. However, you may have a number of design considerations when you're modelling hydraulic systems. You may need to counteract the effect of runaway loads. You may need to attenuate the effect of fluid compressibility to reduce the effect of pressure surges or model the loss in power due to fluid leakage. And you may need a far wider range of hydraulic components that are built into the technology. And this requires more sophisticated tools and this has certainly been a major focus of our recent development efforts. Our solution is the hydraulics library. To develop this library, we chose to partner with a company called Modelon. They specialise in producing high fidelity engineering libraries across various application domains. We partnered with them 
and the technology that we develop with them is essentially a comprehensive set of components for modern fluid pass systems, hydrostatic drives, gearboxes, steering systems and more. It's completely open so you can view all of the equations, all of the code used to generate those components. And another characteristic, another key theme is its extensibility. So you can extend the component library with new custom components. Within the broader environment of MapleSim, you can optimize your models. So for example, you can find the parameters uh, that best match the flow curve from a valve data sheet, for example. You can generate code for hardware in the loop or model in the loop studies. And you can linearize portions of your model. You can, the effect, you can investigate the effect of uncertainty with Monte Carlo simulation or many other types of engineering analyses. MapleSim also has solvers that can simulate complex hydraulic network systems. We'll talk about those later. So what are the key themes, the key characteristics of the hydraulics library for a model on? Well, you model, you create models with real physical components so that your fluid power system looks, or hydrostatic drive looks like a hydraulic circuit diagrams. That means models are easier to share and extend by mem mem members of your team. This modeling approach means that the learning curve is shallow. You don't need any special training to learn how to use the software. But that also gives you the flexibility to create high fidelity models. One key detail is that you don't have to derive system equations. The components contain all the math, all the physics used to describe their dynamics. MapleSim is multi-domain. You can combine hydraulic subsystems with multi-body and electrical systems, thermal elements, and standard signal flow tools. This is all in a single environment, in a single workspace. This means that you streamline your workflow. You're not hopping about from one tool to another. The hydraulics library is comprehensive. There's over 150 components with the ability to extend the library with more. There are hydraulic cylinders, directional control valves, ideal and non-ideal pumps, gas and spring-loaded accumulators, pipes, restrictions and more. And these components let you model higher order effects like yield leakage, compressibility, valve dynamics. Uh, the components are physically realistic across all flow conditions. Hydraulic components can also have temperature offsets from the system. So different parts of your hydraulic circuit can have different working temperature temperatures. This modifies the transport properties of the hydraulic oil used in that subsystem. There's also a wide range of hydraulic fluids, which I'll cover later. The theme of extensibility is important in MapleSim and particularly significant for the new hydraulics library. You can create custom components using several approaches. You can use a range of basic, mechanical and hydraulic building blocks like puppet valves, pistons and more. These are simply components that you drag onto the workspace and connect together. In fact, most of the top level components in the hydraulics library are built using these basic building blocks. For example, you can double click on a plunger cylinder and you'll see the blocks it's constructed from. This helps you understand how to build your own components and indeed how the existing components work. We also have tools to construct new directional control valves by specifying flow conditions for the various stable and intermediate positions. And you can also import or write Medallica. The hydraulics library also has a range of pre-engineered hydraulic oils. These include standard ISO fluids and semi-theoretical models. We have descriptions of commercial fluids in the library. For example, there's a range of fluids from the Mobile Corporation. If, you'll, if you visit mobile.com, you'll actually find references to these fluids on their website. And these fluid descriptions were built from experimental data and have temperature and pressure dependent fluid properties. The fluids are compressible or incompressible and have a fraction of entrained air. A key part of any engineering software tool is the documentation and we've worked hard to make MapleSim's electro electronic documentation and tutorials helpful and as useful as possible. 
For the hydraulics library, we have a comprehensive tutorial and technical guide authored by Modlon. The first few chapters introduce hydraulics modelling and the theory of hydraulics modelling. It also has a detailed description of the component suite together with application-specific component recommendations. All of the governing equations are given in this technical guide. The equations may have been derived from basic or physical laws like the conservation of mass, energy or momentum, or the equations might be empirical curve fits. But everything is fully referenced, so you can trace the equations back to the original journal articles. Hydraulic models can be numerically complex, more so than models in other physical domains. They can generate stiff sets of differential equations, and our developers have engineered an advanced solver, solver that's capable of simulating these tough numerical challenges. The equations generated by hydraulic model can have parameters that are very large and parameters that are very small. For example, pressures can be of the order of 10 to the 7 pascals or more, while friction factors are of, of, are of the order of 10 to the minus 3. And these exist within the same equation set, within the same model. This leads to equations that are difficult to, and slow to solve accurately. Within MapleSim, you can scale large and small numbers so that they're closer in magnitude, hence making the equations easier and quicker to solve for MapleSim. MapleSim also lets you deploy any model to optimize code. This could be standalone ANSI C code. This is base MapleSim functionality. You don't need to purchase a toolbox to do this. And the, and the code is complete with a solver as well that's embedded as source into the code. We also have toolboxes that let you generate Simlink code, DSpace code, and code for LabVIEW. All this code is real-time capable. It's optimized using Maple's symbolic math technology, and it's royalty-free as well. So I'd like to demonstrate the hydraulics library in Maple Sim now, but there are several points I'd like you to uh, watch out for. First of all, the library of components is comprehensive. There's everything from pipe bends, restrictions, di directional control valves, as well as ideal and non-ideal pumps and motors. The models look like real hydraulic circuits. The fluids can have temperature offsets. We have a wide range of hydraulic oil descriptions, which are based on commercially available oils. I'll also show you how you can interface the hydraulics library together with our multi-body engine. And the multi-body technology that Maple Sims provide is the fastest that you can get. It produces extremely fast sets of equations for modeling multi-body systems. So let me just switch into Maple Sim. And I want to start off by showing you a complete model. So this is a model that I've already prepared. This is a model of a hydraulic cylinder on a tipper truck that we've created in our MapleSim environment. And I'm just going to show you immediately the animation generated by the model. So let's just run the animation. You'll see our telescopic cylinder extending, lifting up the skip. You'll see some dynamics at the top. That's because of the compressibility of the oil and the dynam and the uh, stability of the chassis. And then the cylinder retracts again and lowers the skip. Let's run that again. So, in this model, we're simulating the compliance of the wheels of the truck, the suspension system, the compressibility of the hydraulic oil, although I have exaggerated these effects just to, just to make the effect visible on screen. And we're also modeling the inertia the rotational inertia of the skip as it uh, lifts up 
and retracts. So this is what the model looks like. It contains hydraulics, a multi-body description of the skip, a description of the chassis and the interaction of the wheels with ground. It was created by dragging and dropping blocks from our pallets on the left hand side onto the workspace and connecting them together. For example, here we have a pallet component to modelling multi-body systems. Here we have our base hydraulics pallet. And here we have our advanced hydraulics library for model on. So we have things like hydraulic cylinders, differential cylinders, directional control valves, descriptions of various types of oils, various resistances, rigid lines, discretized lines, pipes, pubs, valves, and more. Let's double click inside this subsystem. So this is the telescopic cylinder and these are the base components it was constructed from. This is a plunger cylinder from the model on the hydraulics library. It's this component. If I left click on this component, its parameters are given here on the right hand side. It's at a temperature offset of zero from the system temperature. If I double click on this component, you will see the components that it's constructed from. And this ability to dive into a component is actually a great way of learning how it operates, how it works. So let's just try building a simple hydraulic system from scratch. Let's say that we want to build a simple hydrostatic circuit. Well, I'll start off by expanding the pumps palette and let's build it with idealized components. So this is a simple motor. Let's rotate it clockwise. And I'll connect it to a simple pump. Let's rotate that clockwise as well. And let's just connect them together like so. So this is just a closed hydraulic circuit. And I think we'll need a connection to some kind of reservoir here as well. So this provides our connection to hydro uh, to uh, atmospheric. If I left click on this simple pump, its parameters are given here. I can change all of the parameters such as the leakages, the moment of inertia of the shaft the mechanical friction, the mechanical efficiency, and so on. But I'll leave all of these parameters at their default value for now. Now, I want to drive this pump with a predefined torque. So for that, let's collapse some of these existing pallets. And let's expand the 1D mechanical rotational pallet. And let's just have it driven by a torque. And let's just say that we're, we're having it driven by a, a torque of 100 newton meters. So this is our pump, this is our motor, and this is the motor parameters. I'll just leave their, this at their default values. Um, the motor will be driving some kind of inertia. And at this point, I'll add in a fluid description. Let's just pick a simple fluid with constant values for the viscosity, bulk modulus, and density. They're given here. Let's go to the settings tab, and I'll choose a solver that's suitable for stiff systems, and I'll choose some value of numerical scaling. So let's add a probe at this point. And let's view the mass flow rate here. Let's attach a probe to this mechanical flange. 
and let's view the angular speed, the angular velocity of this rotational shaft. So when I run a MapleSim model, MapleSim goes through a number of predefined steps. First of all, based upon the components it, components it sees on screen, it derives the symbolic equations that describe the system dynamics. It then optimizes them to a computationally efficient form. It then solves the optimized form numerically before giving me my desired results in my simulation results manager. And these are the plots that I asked MapleSim to give the mass flow rate and the angular velocity. So let's just say I wanted to connect this up to some kind of multi-body system. Um, let's say that I just wanted this mode, so lifting a mass. All I'd have to do is add in a rack and pinion system to convert the rotational motion into translational motion. And let's assemble a simple multi-body mechanism. So this is just multi-body ground, a linear joint that translates in the x-axis. So this is pushing a mass along a horizontal surface. And let's have this uh, pushing a mass of, say, one kilogram. And let's just make the connections like so. And we'll add a probe to this point and we'll view the length and the velocity of this mass. So let's run the model again. You see some debugging information here. This is good feedback for when you need to debug your model. But what I'd like to stress about MapleSim is that it's a great physics sandbox. It allows you to quickly prototype multi-domain systems like this, generate models, get results. You can quickly make changes to the parameters, rerun models, and see, effect the ch see the effect that those changes have had on the system dynamics. So here we have the results again. So I have my mass flow rates, the angular velocity. I also have the displacement of the rigid mass along the horizontal and its velocity as well. So if I just run this animation, it won't be particularly interesting. But there we go. That's my hydrostatic drive pushing a mass. So if I wanted to, I could add in some kind of frictional effects to the prismatic joints, say like some kind of bearing friction, viscous friction, or Coulomb friction. If I wanted to, I could add in extra resistances to the hydraulic circuit, say some kind of rigid pipe. Or what I could do is quickly ask MapleSim to raise my load vertically instead of pushing it horizontally just by changing this option here. Now, if I run the model again, the hydrostatic drive has to act against gravity. The value of gravity is given here, as well as uh, together with the direction of gravity. So MapleSim just derives the system equations again, optimizes them, solves them numerically, and gives me my animation and my results again. So if I run my model again, it seems that my hydrostatic drive isn't strong enough, and the mass just falls. So what I could do at this point is increase the torque on my pump. I could reduce the rotational inertia uh, on this uh, uh, rotational mechanical joint. Or I could investigate the effect of other parameter changes on the physics of this system as well. It's a great toolbox for investigating the physics of multi-domain systems. Now, you can build many different types of hydrostatic circuits and here I've just assembled a few more models. So this is an open loop hydrostatic circuit with a pressure relief valve and a check valve. This is actually a spring loader check valve. This is an open loop hydrostatic circuit with a flow control valve and these are all components from the model on hydraulics library. And this is a hydrostatic uh, uh, 
circuit connected to a direct control valve and simply by f uh, flipping the values of these booleans I can make uh, the uh, uh, the rigid body rise or fall just simply by changing the direction of flow so moving on let's try building another model using tools from the hydraulics library from model on I'm going to open a template model first of all in which I've already have placed a few components on screen and let's add in a few more components well this is going to be an actuation system that's that includes some kind of directional control valve so let's pick this directional control valve let's just drag it on screen let's expand the size of the icon and let's connect it to our differential cylinder like so by the way there are lots of smarts in the maple sim interface so you can't connect a hydraulic line to a translational mechanical line so this is our direct control valve as you can see there are three icons three squares in the icon for the direct control valve so all of the DCVs in the hydraulics library use standard flow use standard ISO icons so there are three flow connections if the left boolean is high and the right boolean is low that means flow ta takes the direction given by the arrows here on the left icon that means flow that means flow goes from p to b and from a to t if the right if the right boolean is high and the left boolean is low flow takes the direction given by the arrows on the right hand icon so that means flow goes from P to A and from B to T. So if flow goes from B to A and P to T, this hydraulic cylinder actually extends. If flow goes from P to B and from A to T, this cylinder actually retracts. So let's complete our model like so. So let's say that we actually want to raise this rigid body mass using this direction using this uh, differential cylinder that means we want this rod to extend that means flow has to go from P to A and from B to T so we want the left boolean to be high and the right boolean to be low let's also add in some kind of fluid description this time we'll pick a tabulated hydraulic oil so this is just a standard ISO oil ISO VG32 it uses tabulated fluid parameters so the viscosity, the bulk modulus, the density is tabulated against the temperature and pressure the system temperature is 293 Kelvin and let's click on this differential cylinder if we scroll down we can see that the current offset from the system temperature is 10 let's change the offset to uh, 10 Kelvin so the fluid properties will be extrapolated at a temperature of uh, 303 Kelvin so it'll use the correct value of the density, the viscosity and the bulk modulus so we've selected a SIF solver and we also already have some level of numerical scaling so let's run this model and again MapleSim goes through a number of steps again it drives all the symbolic system equations it then optimizes them to a computationally efficient form um, as some background it does things like identify repeated expressions and factor them out it evaluates those repeated expressions once but uses the result many many times it uh, reduces the index of high index DAE systems 
it uh, solves simple algebraic loops analytically. Once the equations are optimized, they're causalized and then compiled into code, into C code. That compiled code is then simulated and then MapleSim gives me my desired results. I haven't added any probes to this model, but I have my visualization. Ah, oh, I'm not getting, uh, you may be able to see a small amount of movement there. So given the parameters I've specified, this is all the movement I'm getting in the system. What I can do at this point is change some of the parameters, increase the pressure at the P pulse over the differential control valve, or I can experiment with the physics. So some finer detail about the differential cylinder. So there are two chambers in the differential cylinder with leakage between the two. There's the chamber on the cap end and the rod end. And the volume of those chambers can, can increase or decrease as the rod extends or retracts. MapleSim models the compressibility of the oil in the chamber as the volume increases or decreases. So we capture those higher order physics as well. Now the differential cylinder, you can change its geometry as well, such as the length of the rod, the length of the housing. You can also change the area of the cap and rod end. So for example, I could make the area on the rod end of the piston, let's say 0 0.005 meters squared, while the area on the cap end is 0 0.01. So the area on the cap end is twice the area on the rod end. One thing I could do now is actually generate some kind of more sophisticated hydraulic circuit. So I could feed the fluid from the rod end of the hydraulic cylinder back into the tank port of, uh, oh, back into the, uh, fluid port of the uh, uh, of the differential cylinder like so and of course we'll need to close off the ports B and T with a tank as well so this is an example of a regenerative hydraulic circuit So you can ex explore flow configurations like this as well. So I've shown you how to develop simple hydraulic models, and I'm sure you can see the potential of this hydraulics technology. I've shown you one small part of the library of components that uh, the Model on Hydraulics library has. There are far more, and I encourage you to explore the software. So. One thing I mentioned at the beginning of the demonstration was MapleSim's ability to generate optimized code. And let's do that for this model. So this is a model of a hydraulic subsystem that's lifting some kind of multi-body swing mechanism. Let's run the model and I'll show you the simulation results. So here we have the angle of the swing arm, and this is the visualization that MapleSim has automatically generated. So let's run this. So there we go. So I don't want to concentrate on the model in of itself. Well, what I want to do is show you some neat things you can do with a model like this. You can generate standalone ANSI C code from this model and compile it to a DLL that you can call from other environments. And this is all this is all base functionality. This is all out-of-the-box functionality. So here I've attached a Maple template 
to this hydraulics model. And let's click on this button. When I do that, MapleSim grabs a reference to this MapleSim model and extracts all the system equations. This may take uh, a few seconds more. So MapleSim actually has a number of these Maple analysis templates bundled with it. There are templates for extracting system equations, uh, Monte Carlo simulation, parameter sweeps, sensitivity analysis, linearization, and more. So I'm going to skip past some of these options. Here, under the code generation options, you can pick anything from a fixed step Euler solver to an implicit uh, Euler solver that's suitable for stiff sets of differential equations. You can choose the level of code optimization you want, anything from 0 to 3. There's one or two other options as well. But if I cl click on Generate C Code, MapleSim, using Maple, analyzes the system equations and optimizes them without any loss of fidelity. It then generates standalone ANSI C code. So this is the C code that MapleSim has generated. Um, it's not particularly exciting, C code never is, but it's fully documented. We've described the API of the C code, how you can call it from other environments, and it's complete with a solver as well. And I'd like to stress that this is extremely efficient C code. You're not going to get any faster C code than this. So you can compile the C code and use it from different environments. Previously, I compiled C code generated by MapleSim hydraulic models to a DLL and connected them to Excel. So within Excel, you can change parameters such as the flow rate, the mass of the swing mechanism, the working temperature of the fluid. You can change things like the time step for the solver, the total simulation time. And if you click on simulate, Excel will send those parameters back to the DLL compiled from MapleSim C code, get the new results, and plot a chart of the angle of the swing mechanism. So this is all done with automatically generated C code. So that was all I wanted to show you in the software today. Now, if you do have any questions about MapleSim or what I've shown you today, feel free to email us at applicationsengineering at maplesoft.com. Thank you very much for listening.